want to show you this photo first um, of a young lady. Her name is Tristan Bailey. And according to the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office, she's missing. Feel our pain. Feel our pain. I knew, but I must forgotten. Emotion and flicker. You are my everything. What is truly being safe? I think that it's one of those luxuries that people take for granted. Truly having peace of mind. What would that be worth to you? Would you pay for it? I guess that question is rhetorical in a sense because we already know the answer to that question. You do pay for safety, but no amount of preparation can prepare you for the worst. A tragic event, an unseen event. Sometimes we do all we can to mold our life, but fate chooses to go another path. A split second decision can alter not only your life, but the lives of everyone around you. This next story I'm bringing to you is in memory of a young girl who went by the name of Tristan Bailey. On January 18th of 2008, the world would make way for Tristan Bailey. Tristan Bailey was a glowing light. Everyone that knew her was touched by her. Tristan Bailey lived in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, Jacksonville isn't the most safest place to live, but there are areas that close to nothing happens there. Now, when it comes to this suburb, the most they really deal with is petty theft, car burglary, and occasionally a domestic violence charge in that area, but violence just doesn't register on that scale. Tristan Bailey came from a family who was sometimes referred to as the Bailey Seven. Two parents, which would be Forrest and Stacy, and five children. Forrest and Stacy worked their ass off. They did everything they could to provide a great life for their children. The family would settle down in the St. John area of Jacksonville, Florida. Now, Tristan is the youngest of five siblings. She's the baby of the family now. Being the youngest definitely has its perks, but it also has its downsides. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, in the year of 2021, Tristan Bailey would be 13 years old and attending Patriot Oaks Academy. There, she was a cheerleader and she was very, very serious about this craft. In fact, she was so serious that sometimes her parents had to threaten to take cheerleading away so that she'll keep her head in the books. After all, cheerleading is an extracurricular activity, but your studies are what's most important. So even though cheerleading started to get in the way of her studies, she managed to get back on course and realized that, you know, her parents weren't playing it. If she was gonna be a cheerleader, then her grades needed to be up to par and that's where she kept him. Her teachers described her as very eager to learn. Tristan loved to be the center of attention. She danced, she evidently was a comedian, made people laugh, you know, she was just one of those people who made everyone's day better. She was a regular seventh grader girl, ready to take on the world. Outside of her studies in cheerleading, she was a community driven person. She was loved by everyone. On May 9th of 2021, Tristan Bailey would go missing from our home. Hey, Facebook family, Janice Harris here, channel for the local station. We are getting prepared, but I wanted to take a moment to go live on my uh, Facebook page to just touch base with the Facebook family. And this is Mother's Day, but unfortunately, this is not turning out to be a pleasant Mother's Day for one family in St. John's County. I want to show you this photo first um, of a young lady. Her name is Tristan Bailey. And according to the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, she's missing. She is a 13 year old girl. Um, according to reports, she was last seen around 1.15 a.m. this morning at the Durban Amenity Center in St. John's County. She was reportedly at the time wearing a white cheerleader skirt and a dark colored shirt. So here we are, 
It's May 9th, 2021. Now, May 9th of 2021 was a particularly hard day for Stacy because this was Mother's Day. And instead of waking up and enjoying the day with her children, she's now looking for one. Shortly after 10 a.m. on May 9th, her mother would place a call to the authorities, alerting them that Tristan was missing. Now, from the beginning of this investigation, it was treated as a missing person's case. Now, in normality, they're normally treated as a runaway in the first few hours, you know, just until we're sure that foul play is involved. But this was completely out of Tristan's character. So they already knew something was wrong. Something is up. Something sinister might be lurking beneath this. So the authorities begin to do what they do, issuing bullets and posters, letting the community know that she's missing, uh, activating searches, but it leads to nowhere. But it turns out that around 6 p.m. that day, a guy would be out on his own, doing his own search, looking for Tristan. You know, this is a tight-knit community, so everyone was looking for her. While, while this guy was out doing his own search, he would come across a wooded area where he would find the body of Tristan Bailey. Okay, everybody ready? Everybody good? Okay. Uh, first of all, good evening. And uh, this was not the outcome the St. John's County Sheriff's Office wanted or this community. Um, however, we're going to go ahead and I wanna, I'm going to reiterate this numerous times after this press conference, during this press conference, I asked you to give respect to this community and give respect to the family. Uh, this morning at approximately 10 o'clock this morning, the St. John's County was notified by the family of Tristan Bailey that she had been, uh, she was reported missing this morning at 10 hours, 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, 13 years old, white female, they gave a clothing description. The family last saw her last night at approximately midnight. And uh, at that time, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office in this community went to work um, at this, this morning. Um, this was an exhausting search by the neighborhood, by the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have located a body that is preliminarily identified as Tristan Bailey. Um, again, it's in the early stages, but we will verify that through the process. Um, I will tell you this again, we've notified the St. John's County School District. Um, this is a grieving community and we're going to respect that grieving community. And I ask you that you put this out there and you help us stand behind this community and let them grieve together. Um, anything I'm missing back here? This is, a, this is the early stages of a, of a very, very uh, complex investigation. Um, and with that being said, of course, again, we're going to give the respect to our investigations unit, um, Major or Director Skip Cole and the CID unit uh, to go ahead and do their job from this point forward. Is anyone in custody? Anything else on this? What about the two homes that are rubbed off in the area? Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. There's a lot of people in this community we're talking to. And with that being said, again, this is the early stages, so we ask you that you give us time too, uh, throughout the night time to work through our investigation. Uh, we will be in contact with Parade Pass, we'll be in contact with all of our media sources as she has been in the past, and we'll update you in the morning time. So thank you very much, have a good night. No one's in custody? Any more information? So she goes missing in the early morning hours of May 9th of 2021. By 10 a.m., she's reported missing. But by 6 p.m. on that same day, she would be presumed dead. Now, I know that this made that day just a lot harder for her mother. I can't imagine the thoughts going through her head. I know it must have been really rough. So now the search has been canceled and it is actively a homicide investigation. So now it's really time to kick things in gear. One of the first things they do is begin to check surveillance cameras, looking for any image of Tristan. I mean, if she left the house walking, some camera somewhere must have captured her. During the process of checking surveillance cameras, the police would strike gold. They would in fact find surveillance footage of Tristan Bailey walking down the street. Only in this surveillance footage, she isn't alone. She seems to be accompanied by a male around her age. This surveillance footage would eventually lead police to a guy named Aiden Fucci. Aiden Fucci is a 14 year old kid who also attended Patriot Oaks Academy. He lived in the same neighborhood as Tristan, but at this point, the police don't know whether they're friends or whether this was just a quick acquaintance. Now, after speaking with Aiden after a few minutes, they realized that Aiden had given them a place of interest, which would be at his friend's home. His friend's name would be Trey. Now, Aiden was at Trey's house hanging out when Tristan just happened to come over there. The plan was never for Tristan, Aiden, 
and Trey to hang out. The plan was for Tristan and Trey to hang out, but Aiden just so happened to be there. But Trey's parents, I guess, end up discovering that he had company in the home. They come in and tell Tristan and Aiden that they have to leave. This is when Tristan and Aiden leave walking on foot. So Trey is questioned about the events on that night. He maintains that Tristan and Aiden came over, but they were asked to leave by his parents. They left walking on foot. So now this leaves Aiden as essentially the last guy to see Tristan alive. On May 10th of 2021, Aiden Fucci would be picked up at his house in order to be questioned by the police. But it's what he does inside of the squad car that really begins to raise an eyebrow. We're, we're having fun in a cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you fucking walk out the damn... When you see this in a cop car, guys. It's tripping, dude. He would post a Snapchat caption has anyone seen Tristan lately? So he posts his Snapchat and he takes the ride down to the station for further interrogation. Now, when he gets there, the question begins immediately. Only Aiden can't seem to keep his story straight. He first tell the police that yes, they walk home together. Yes, there's him on their surveillance, but he went home, Tristan went her separate way, and that was the last time he saw her. But they didn't take that for an answer. After further analysis, he would change his story. He would now say that Tristan Bailey came on to him and he had to push her away. She then fell down and hit her head on a rock. He then changes that story again. This story would change several times as to the whereabouts of Tristan and what happened. Now, while the interrogation process is going on, the police are at Aiden's home with a warrant. They're now searching his home, going through his room, going through his things, questioning the parents, etc. Now, while Aiden's being interrogated, his mother is back at the house, I guess cleaning up. The police will recover a surveillance tape of what seemed to be his mother going inside of his room, taking a pair of his jeans out, subsequently taking them to the sink to wash them afterward. She then takes these jeans and puts them back in Aiden's room. Those pants would later test positive for blood. Now, at this point, Aiden is giving the police several stories. He can't keep one story straight. You see, because at this point, he is aware that they have captured surveillance camera of him and Tristan walking together. But he was unaware that they captured surveillance of him all alone, walking back from the area that Tristan was discovered in all by himself. Tristan was nowhere in sight. Just Aiden walking down the street with a pair of shoes in his hand. So now that he knows this information is present, his parents tell him to basically shut up. They want to lawyer up, stop talking. You know, at this point, there's no need to go further with it. He's essentially already hung himself. The police know exactly who did it. The only question now is why. The when and where have been answered, but the why is very important. It's important because not only did a mother lose her daughter on Mother's Day, but now they're waiting for answers as to what happened to their daughter and the reason why. That has to be a very terrible feeling to know that something happened, but not know the story behind the act itself. So the police would begin to peer into Aiden's life, hoping to find somewhat of an answer as to why this happened because at this point he's clammed up he's not talking anymore and he's getting ready to put in a not guilty plea so they do their normal work go to questioning the friends retracing steps talking to loved ones and then they discover that this isn't a spur of the moment thing at least that's not what it looks like because according to Aiden's friends he had been claiming that he wanted to kill someone for a little while now. He has repeated this sentence to several people in several places that he kind of knew that he would end up in prison for killing someone. He knew that he would go down for doing something bad. He even always talked about taking someone to the woods and murdering them in the same way he did Tristan. So at this point, we know that this kid is pretty disturbed. Upon further inspection of Aiden's room while collecting evidence, 
they would find satanic drawings, pictures of women being harmed. And the dark side of this child is really starting to shine through. Now, when Tristan was murdered, she was actually stabbed 114 times. I mean, that indicates a lot of rage, a lot of hate. You know, a, a lot of anger. 49 of those wounds would indicate that they were defense wounds, which means that she literally fought for her life. A little time passes and the parents still don't have the answers that they wanted. They would be forced to bury their daughter with no answers as to why it happened. All of the friends, family, teachers, loved ones, everyone who encountered Tristan would attend this funeral and a lot of love would pour in that building. There would be a lot of emotion in that building for a very lovely soul. A soul that was taken way too soon. Tristan had a laugh that was absolutely contagious and the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. I try to figure out the right words and write a speech for this. However, as time keep moving on, I realized that there were no right words to say. I just want to explain how important my sister was and how much I love her. Farewell. Thou art too dear for my possessing, and like enough, thou knowest thy estimate. The charter of thy worth gives thee releasing. My bonds in thee are all determinate. For how do I hold thee but by thy granting? And for that riches, where is my deserving? The cause of this fair gift in me is wanting. And I know one day I will see her again. And my new goal is to tell her that I've reached all of my goals between now and then. So today I leave you with this. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memories become treasures. Let Tristan become your treasure. For those of you that were blessed to personally know her, you know what an amazing and fiery personality she had. And you can attest that she was the kind of friend that you would like to have. And she always had your back. Hear our pain, feel our pain. Tristan was taken too soon. To this day, there is still no known motive as to why Aiden did what he did. He has entered a plea of not guilty. Now, he was essentially charged with second degree murder as a minor. But after all the media coverage, it was up to a first degree murder charge and he is now being charged as an adult. After Aiden Fucci allegedly committed this heinous act, he would write on Tristan's body. He would write the word karma, and he would draw a smiley face. Now, even though he hasn't given his account of the story as to why he did what he did, I think he already gave it away. In one of his versions, he would claim that Tristan came on to him and he pushed her away, when in fact, I'm pretty sure it was the other way around. He probably made a move, was rejected, and then went off in a rage. I truly hope that one day the Bailey family receives the answers that they deserve. This was a heinous act. It's sad. Tristan Bailey was taken at 13 years old. 13, that's a very young age. You haven't even begun to live yet. Aiden's case is set for trial of this year, so I'm pretty sure that a lot more answers will come out. You know, we'll learn a lot more details. Rest in peace. Tristan Bailey, your legacy will forever live on. What is truly being safe? I think that it's one of those luxuries that people take for granted. Truly having peace of mind. What would that be worth to you? Would you pay for it? I know a lot of us would.